now we're going to be talking about runoff elections. The general idea of what a runoff election is, first you'll have a plurality vote taken, then if one choice has the majority or over 50% of the votes, they would win. If no candidate has the majority of votes, then a second plurality election is held with a designated number of the top candidates. Generally, it's just the top two. This process would be repeated until one candidate has the majority of votes. In real life, we don't often have runoff elections because it's costly to have elections again. The type of runoff problems you're going to see is where you will be given a uh, preference ranking table. Generally, you're going to be asked to do a plurality election first, and then you might be asked to have a runoff between the top two choices. When doing these problems, we need to keep in mind the assumptions that were talked about in the last video. The first assumption is that, again, if one voter ranks one candidate higher than another, if they're forced to choose between the two, they will always choose the higher ranked candidate. And then the second assumption you have to keep in mind is voters' order of preference is not changed by the elimination of one or more candidates. So let's look at this example. A survey asked people to rank the following sodas, Coke, Pepsi, and Dr. Pepper. Their preference rankings are shown in the table below. So we have our preference rankings here. Part A is asking us which choice would win using plurality. And then B is asking us which choice would win using plurality, followed by a runoff between the top two choices. So first we have to solve this using plurality, same techniques we saw in the last video. So we will set up you know, something over here to just keep track of how many votes everybody has. So first, um, and notice here it says percent of voters. Sometimes you could be given a percent of voters, in which case all of these numbers would add up to 100 instead of a specific number of voters. So here we have 23% that shows Pepsi first, so that's who they vote for. Here we have 21% ranked Dr. Pepper first, so that's who they will vote for. 19% ranked Dr. Pepper first, so that's who they vote for. And then we have 37% ranked Coke first, so that is who they vote for. Now we would add all of these up and see how many votes everybody has. So Coke has 37%, Pepsi has 23%, and Dr. Pepper ends up with 40%. So Dr. Pepper ends up winning the election using plurality. Now for part B, we want to see which choice would win using plurality, followed by a runoff between the top two choices. In that case, we're going to be putting Coke against Pepsi because Coke came in second place. So we'll start off with a new table for this. Right now we're just doing Coke against Dr. Pepper. Now what I'm going to do is cross out Pepsi over here. We are going to pretend this candidate doesn't exist. And we're going to count up how many votes they get. Now, everybody has to vote in the runoff election again. Now, let's look at this first group of 23 voters, or 23%. They originally voted for Pepsi, but Pepsi is out of this election now. They're not a choice anymore. So now they have to choose, are they going to vote for Coke, their least favorite choice, or Dr. Pepper, their second favorite choice? They're going to vote for Dr. Pepper because it's the choice that they prefer more out of all of the candidates that are still in the election. So I'm going to put a dot here just because every now and then you might get a little bit confused by this too. So this is their second favorite choice, but it's their most preferred choice out of everybody that's still here. So that's who they're going to give their 23 votes to. Now if we look at the rest of the columns of voters, everybody else's first choice is still in the election. So they're not going to have to change their votes um, and vote for, you know, their second preferred candidate or, you know, any other candidate. If your first choice is still included in the runoff, these voters are still going to vote for their first choice. So these guys still vote the exact same way they did before. And now if we add everything up, Coke ends up getting 37% and Dr. Pepper ends up getting 63%. So Dr. Pepper also ends up winning the runoff. Now, one other technique I'll talk about that you might find useful for solving these types of problems is some students, I find, like to make themselves a second table and entirely remove the middle row like this. So what did we have here? We had 23, 21. They'll make themselves another table like this because it's easier for them to keep track of things. So if looking at stuff like this is a little bit confusing, maybe something like this is easier for you to look at. 
we would still solve this the exact same way, you know, where we see these votes, and then we're going to have to realize, okay, well, this 23% is voting for this candidate now. Um, that's just an alternative if you like solving it this way. You could also write out the whole table again and then cross out rows. I recommend doing this in pencil because when we get to other problems, you may want to erase this to see what numbers are there. Let's look at another example. 33 votes are cast in an election for the best vampire slayer. Which candidate would win using a plurality election followed by a runoff between the top two candidates? We already did the plurality election portion of this in the last video where we talked about how to read preference ranking tables. So I'm just going to record the numbers we had, you know, down from last time. So regular plurality, we had, uh, we had 10 votes for Summer, 10 votes for Belmont, 6 votes for Joe Starr, and 7 votes for Van Helsing. So we had a tie between these two candidates. Runoffs are a useful thing that we can use to break a tie to determine who would win if, you know, there is a tie in the regular plurality. Now what we're going to do is, these are our top two. We are going to eliminate the other choices, and we're just going to put the top two against each other. Now we're just looking at these two candidates, and everybody voting is only able to vote for one of these two candidates. So we have Summers, and we have Belmont. So first up, we have these ten voters. Their first choice is still in the election, so that's who they're going to vote for. Now we have five voters. Their first choice is still there, so they still vote for them. Now we're coming up to this column of four voters. They have to choose to vote between their third choice and their fourth choice. So we need to determine what candidate does this group prefer more out of everybody that's still left in the election. And they prefer their third choice over their fourth choice, so that's who they're going to vote for. So their four votes are going to Belmont because that's the choice that they prefer more. Three is a higher ranking than four. Now we'll go to the next column of six voters. They don't have their first choice here anymore either. Now they have to choose between their second choice and their third choice. So their second choice is the choice they prefer more out of everybody who's still in the election. So that's who they are going to give their six votes to. These five voters, their first choice is still there, so they still vote for their first choice. Now we have three voters that have to choose between their second choice and their fourth choice. They will choose their second choice. So that's who they give their three votes to. Now we'll add everything up. Summers has 13 votes, and Belmont ends up with 20 votes. So Belmont would win the runoff, but again, um, if we wanted to check our work here, we would check it the same way we check our work doing the regular plurality elections. If we add 13 and 20 up here, that adds up to 33, which is how many votes we were told were cast in this election to begin with. It's especially important that you check your work when you're doing runoff problems. A common mistake a lot of people will often make is they'll count this 10, they'll count this 5, they'll count this 5, and then they'll forget to count any of these rows because for some reason you start thinking, well, I need to look for ones. Everybody needs to vote again in the runoff election. So these four voters are not going to be so angry their first and second choice have been kicked out of the election that they're going to refuse to vote. They're still going to come back and vote. They're just going to vote for whichever candidate they prefer most. So always make sure for plurality and for runoff elections that the tallies you have add up to the correct number of votes. You're way less likely to make mistakes if you always double check that your final tallies add up to the correct number of voters. Let's say we have one more example here. We have 16 dietetic students are voting on their favorite type of dairy-free milk. Which candidate would win in a plurality election followed by a runoff between the top two candidates? What I'd recommend doing here is pause the video here, try to solve the problem on your own. Once you think you've solved it or if you get stuck, hit play and you'll be able to see me go through the solution to this problem. So first what we need to do here is have a plurality election to determine who the top two choices are. After that, we are going to do a runoff between whoever the top two are. So we'll do our regular plurality over here, where we're going to see who everybody's first choice is, and that's who they're going to end up voting for. 
So here we have these six voters all voted for soy milk, so that's who their vote goes to. We have three that voted for almonds, so that's who they end up voting for. Then this one voter, these four voters, and these two voters all vote for oat milk. Then if we tally everything up, we end up getting six, three, and seven. So if we were just asked who would win this election using plurality, we would say oat milk because they have the highest number of votes. But here we're being asked to determine who would win a runoff election um, after we've already done plurality. So our top two choices are here. Our top two choices are going to be soy milk and almond milk. So we're going to get rid of almond milk and just put soy milk and oat milk against each other. And again, just to double check, these add up to 16, meaning we didn't miss anything. So now we'll do our runoff portion of this problem. Here's another color here. So we're going to take out almond milk as a candidate because they came in third place. And now we're just putting the top two choices against each other. These six voters, their first choice is still there, so they will still vote for them. These three voters now have to choose between their second choice and their third choice. So they're going to choose their second choice because it's the choice that they prefer most out of all candidates that are still in the election. So they give their three votes to soy. Now we have one voter that has to, well, their first choice is still there, so that's who they vote for. Four voters whose first choice is still there, and then two voters whose first choice is still there. So now if we add all of these numbers up, we end up getting nine and seven. We add up nine and seven, that adds up to 16, meaning we didn't miss anybody. And we see that soy ends up winning the runoff.